Hey, what's up? So I'm going to talk about Reactive Database, which is which is called RxDB. So I'm going also to use Node.js and Express and WebSockets. Uh, the idea behind this videos uh, is to create a real-time uh, RESTful API that every change on the database will be uh, emitted to all the clients that are connected to the server. So just like a simple demo to show you what the cool things we can do with this database. So to have a small introduction about it, uh, we will talk about some of its features. So first thing, it's a real time, uh, it contains a real time queries. So in addition to normal pull based queries, uh, so in the documentation they called uh, a type of queries, a pull based queries, because they, if you think about it in MySQL, you will create a query, you will give it to the database, you will pull some data, and you will do whatever you want from it. So this exists in uh, RxDB. But alongside with that, RxDB is capable of having so-called real-time queries. These do not only give you the results once, but instead emit the new query results each time the state of your database changes. So for example, imagine we have this, uh, heroes table or heroes collection in our database we are we are telling the database to find all the heroes and sort them by name then we are accessing this uh, dollar sign and this is actually a valid token a valid variable name in javascript so this is a property name inside the object that gets returned from this find uh, function and this is actually an observable and basically an observable if you don't know about them uh, they are just an object that you will attach some uh, callback functions uh, to it. And this object will keep calling that callback function on a specific time. So in this case, whenever the database values or the values inside the database in the heroes uh, collection changes, this callback function here we pass to the subscribe uh, method will be called each time the heroes collection changes. So like this, we will get the heroes uh, changes in real time, in this example. Um, so actually, this is really interesting if you think about it. Every, every change happens in the database. We will, we, we will be able to capture it uh, in real time, uh, which I think a lot of applications require that. So the second feature is replication. So to synchronize data between your clients and your server, this is actually a common uh, issue that you will, you will face when you are developing mobile applications. So Rx database provides replication modules for CouchDB and GraphQL. So when your server changes data, your application will automatically stream that change to the client and updates its visual uh, representation. So the third uh, feature, so these features are giving us like a hint where we can use it, right? Uh, so the third, the third feature is multiple window tab support. So when your application is open in multiple windows, this happens a lot of times, right? You are maybe opening Facebook or Twitter in multiple tabs. So at the same time, yeah. So it, it can be tricky to synchronize actions between open states, to synchronize the data between uh, the open states. This is assuming that your database is uh, on the client, uh, on the client, yeah. So you can actually have databases on the client side. Uh, one of them is called IndexedDB. Uh, we will come to that uh, in the future, but let's just continue. So Rx database automatically broadcast all the changes between, between these tabs, so you don't have to take any care of it. Uh, usually in the web, when we have uh, a case where the user opens multiple tabs and we want to maybe transfer data from tab to another, uh, for a common or something you will face at some point in your uh, web development career, th that is your application is uh, emitting some real-time events and you are displaying a notification to the user. So if the user is opening five tabs of your application, uh, the user will get five notifications. Uh, of course, it's one for each tab, but the sound effect will be displayed in all of them. So it will have like uh, a bomb thrown to the user face like uh, five tabs, suddenly it plays uh, voices, uh, which um, tells you or give the user a feel that this app is not that uh, 
good. It's just um, just broken. It's just out of control. So what usually people do is uh, use the podcast channel API to manage these kind of things. So if a tab, you can think of a tab as like an instance of your application. So if an instance of your application receives uh, an order to display notification, it will tell other tabs to, st- to not display that notification. I will display it. That's what usually happen, maybe in Facebook. Uh, but in case of RxDB, uh, uh, this connection or these kind of uh, communication will happen between them because they are all subscribed to the same database. So you can uh, manage that more easily without using the podcast channel API. Uh, I think this is really interesting if you have these kind of uh, issues in your application. So the feature number four is it's NoSQL, so NoSQL database, so we have collections. Uh, number five is encryption. So RxDB comes with an encryption module where specific fields of a document can be stored encrypted. So when your client's device is stolen or hacked, you can be sure that sensitive data is not readable by third parties. So this is nice. Now, this is something I really like, which is the schema. So RxDB is based on JSON schema where the structure of documents is defined for each collection. So it's, it's not like uh, MongoDB, you will create just a collection and just insert whatever you want from it. Uh, this, the, whole, uh, the whole model structure here starts from JSON schema. And if you don't know JSON schema, it's basically a way to describe and validate JSON document. And this JSON schema actually exists in JavaScript, exists in Python, as a library, of course, in JavaScript and Python, and Ruby exists in a lot of languages as a library. You will just define an object in JavaScript or a dictionary in Python that defines how a JSON should look like. And uh, usually you will pass that uh, object to another library. In this case, we are using RxDB. So RxDB would read that JSON schema and validate the data based on that schema. And JSON schema is extremely powerful. You can't val- you can uh, describe almost, as far as I know, uh, all kinds of JSON formats. So array, array of objects, array of numbers, you can validate all of that. And it's it's really powerful and you can actually customize it. Um, And in the documentation, they are telling us that this is useful using JSON JSON schema when you develop in a team with multiple developers. It's also because a new developer can just read the JSON schema and understand what this uh, collection is about, right? It also provides information for a reactive database to do performance optimizations. Also, the schema is uh, virginized, and you can provide migration strategies to migrate the data, which is or, which is already stored in the clients. So this actually will happen uh, a lot of times if you are using uh, maybe uh, client-side databases. Because for some reason, you might want to map the data or migrate it to a new format. So this also exists. You can support that in RxDB. So number seven is key compression. So saving data on the client can be tricky because you cannot predict how much storage capacity will be available. Uh, RxDB provides a key compression module that compresses the stored JSON documents, which saves about 70% of storage space. This is uh, actually very nice as well. So I will stop now and continue on this chapter and the next video. Thank you.